Welcome back to Ask Katie the Drug Lady. Sorry I've been gone for a couple weeks. It's been crazy. I've been working a ton after rotation stopped, and my husband has a rip roaring sinus infection. So, fun stuff, guys. So, I'm here today to talk about discount cards. The bane of pharmacy existence. I know I've said this about prior authorizations, but discount cards are a daily struggle, guys. They can be wonderful, don't get me wrong, but there's different types, and there's stuff you need to know about them that they put in itty bitty tiny lettering to try and keep you from understanding all the problems with them. So I've broken this down into three different types. There might even be more subsets. So your first type are your manufacturer cards. These come from manufacturers that know that their drug is ridiculously expensive. So to try and help you with that, they have two different types of manufacturer cards. The first type is the trial card. The trial card is completely outside of your insurance. So this is just a 30-day supply or less. Um, you've probably seen these in maybe the newspaper, magazines. Cialis was a big one when it came out for erectile dysfunction and for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Ooh, that's a mouthful, right? So they would give away 30 pills for free outside of your insurance just to get you really hooked on the drug, right? Then they're hoping that you'll pay um, or maybe your insurance will pay at least for like three tablets per month or something like that afterwards. So that's a trial card. Then we have copay cards. Copay cards also come from the manufacturer, but they're with your insurance. So if you don't have insurance, this can really be a problem. Because you'll get that free trial, you're you're hooked, you want it, it's a good drug. And then you go to bill your insurance with this card that says pay no more than $15, $50, whatever it is, pay no more than, right? The big old fat lie, okay? And here's all the problems with those. So number one, have to have insurance. Number two, there's usually something on the card that states they'll only pay up to a certain amount. So there'll probably be a little line somewhere in tiny little print saying, we'll pay no more than $100 off your prescription, $200 off your prescription, something like that. So if your copay or your deductible with your insurance is $500, right? So this drug is say $500. They're only going to take $100 off of that. That's not paying more than $50. That's bad math. So those are the issues with those. They seem like this really great idea, and then we go to bill it, and we have a problem. Also, what if you have a prior authorization, and you didn't know that because you just got a 30-day supply free. In that 30 days, your doctor could have been working on this prior authorization for you, which that's another video if you want to go check that video out. So lots of problems with the copay cards. We also can't use them with... Uh, government insurance, so Medicaid, Medicare, TRICARE, which is the military insurance. Can't use with any of those. Nope. Nope. Some cards have to be activated before we can use that, so that's a step that the patient has to do. <sighs> Some people really don't want to call a phone number to save them hundreds of dollars, and I don't know why. Some we can go online with your permission to put in your information and get you the card. Um, another issue is that they're not readily available. They're not. Some you can get online, some you have to get from your doctor. Some only give you a limit. They give you a limit of one card per lifetime. Lifetime! So you might only get this for six, you know, for six months, whatever the, the card is good for. Um, you might only, you might be like, getting at the end of the year and you only get one prescription and then you can't get another card. That's bunk. Some you can just print and print and print and print. And this can really help people with high-priced um, inhalers. Uh, the Brio inhaler is really expensive. I get those for people all the time. Um, Eloquis is a really expensive uh, blood thinner for your parents or grandparents out there that are on that. But again, can't use it with Medicare. They don't tell people that. Doctors just give these out or say, oh, it's online. No. Stop lying. Doctors have no clue, by the way. 
You know, some drug representative came to their office and said, this is the newest, greatest thing since sliced bread. Here's a coupon card! And nothing else. So those are the issues with your manufacturer cards. Our other type are just the plain discount cards. So for people without insurance, this can be really helpful. GoodRx is one that's advertised all over the place, including on YouTube. You type the drug name in, um, and spits out different prices at different locations. GoodRx is more like a search engine, okay, or Obamacare, okay? It searches you and the drug and a discount card and puts them all together to get you a good price. So it's not one card. It's not a GoodRx card that works on every drug. That's just not how those work. The way discount card companies work is each company has their own list of drugs that they have kind of made a deal with. And they've said, these will be the prices at these locations so that people can come and get your drug. And you get paid. And these, these drug companies say, yes, that's a great idea. So GoodRx is a multitude of cards. So you could get one card on GoodRx for Adderall. And it'll make it pretty cheap. Then you could have another drug, say Zoloft. And it would be to another card that's pretty cheap. So they're two different cards. So don't think that you get one card and boom, that's going to work on everything. So I have so many people come in, oh, use my GoodRx card. Which one? I have like five in here. And now I have to figure out which one you used last on which drug. Another thing is, a lot of pharmacies, at least mine, does not have free Wi-Fi. So patients have gotten a little lazy. We all get lazy fine. I'm lazy all the time. And they want me to go look up the card and the drug and all that and get it for them. And that's fine when I have time. But if there's a child with an ear infection crying in my waiting area, I'm not going to care about the bitter ice card. I'm really sorry. I'm going to care about the crying child with the ear infection. Um, another thing is it's, it's your health care. You know, take control of your health care and, and go do this. And a lot of people think that's really harsh. I don't care. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I want everybody in the world to take control of their health care. That's all I care about. Um, that's going to be one of these goals with these videos. Not just to give information, but to empower you to take control of your health care. Know what meds you're on. Take the steps to try and get cheaper meds if that's what you need. <sighs> that, that was my rant. That was my rant about discount cards. So just know there's not just one card that covers every drug. That's impossible. That, they would go bankrupt if they covered every single drug to the point where you could afford it. There's multitudes of drugs. And they're taking your information. They are. So if you're one of those conspiracy theorists who wants to keep all your information to yourself, and you don't want anybody have any information, don't use discount cards. Because they're using your information. They're using your demographics um, to, to get you a better deal. And, uh, so you're probably on mailing lists and all that stuff. So, very sorry. I might be getting those, like, robocalls because of it. Because your phone number uh, has to go into those. So, that's another thing. Watch out for that. Uh, so, and the same with these manufacturer cards, okay? So, say you're on an expensive uh, inhaler or something. They're taking your demographics, your age, what your diagnosis is. Um, what type of insurance you have. They ask that. They ask if you have private insurance. And sometimes they'll even ask what company it's through. So they're collecting that information for their records as well. Um, it's also for post-marketing, so they can ask you, like, how you're doing with the inhaler, if there's any problems. Um, that's another way they can collect information from you for their post-marketing. So once they go on the market, they collect data as well for their research and how they're doing. Um, is this drug better than that drug, and, and so forth. Are there any side effects that didn't come up in the regular testing of these products? And please uh, look for my video about why my prescription is so expensive, because this might shed some light. Um, these types of trials and things also shed light on why these prescriptions are expensive and why these drug companies then come out with these discount cards for you to try and help you. In general, if you have private insurance, if you have... Caremark, Aetna, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Let's just say Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> Everybody knows what Blue Cross Blue Shield is. Um, if you have that, it's most likely that your prescriptions are going to be cheaper 
than with a discount card. If that's not the case, either it's a really cheap flipping drug, I mean really cheap like hydrochlorothiazide, that stuff's like a penny a pill, or you have a deductible. And yes, you most likely have a deductible. It, it's getting to the point where I can't think of any insurance that doesn't have one. So if your prescription is all is suddenly very expensive at the beginning of the year, it's a deductible. And again, this is in the video of why my prescription is so expensive. If that's the case, you shouldn't use the discount card. I'm I, I know we want to spend I know we want to save money. We all want to save money. However, let's say your prescription is seventy dollars under your deductible, okay? And you find a discount card makes it forty dollars. That's a thirty dollars savings, right? Not necessarily, because if you were to pay that $70 along with other things towards your deductible, like your medical visits, your lab testing, things like that that are going towards your deductible, eventually you're going to hit that deductible, hopefully, unless you're just one of those people who never get sick. Um, I never hit my deductible because I never have time to go to the doctor. So, if you, don't hit, if you never hit the deductible, get, get the discount card, that's fine. But if you're somebody who might hit that deductible, get, pay the $70. You know, if you have a $2,000 deductible, you could totally hit that before the end of the year. And your prescription might go down to $9 or $10. That's a huge savings. We're just paying $40 the entire year. And these discount cards are variable. So depending on what brand that that, that that company gets in, depending upon the deals that that discount card makes with other companies, those numbers can shift dramatically. There, I think everybody knows of the EpiPen scandal and how it jumped up in price ridiculously. This can happen with anything. Generic drugs, Adderall, uh, amphetamine salts, jumped up in price like overnight. There's no limit of what a company can charge. Um, so again, this is all in the other video. But the, when you use a discount card, it's not necessarily, oh, it's going to be $40 for the rest of the year. It can be $40 this month. Next month, it can be 80 You just don't know. But with your insurance, at least that is going towards the deductible. So that's something to think about before running to GoodRx or running to the Internet to try and find a cheaper price. Um, there are options. If you don't have insurance, you can go. Uh, it's not a discount card, but the $4 plans that some uh, or the free plans that people have at Bilo, uh, or other grocery stores, I'm just throwing out Bilo because I was there earlier, um, or Walmart, Walmart's a big one, um, there's Meyer up north, they all have their plans, and, uh, what they're doing, and please don't be offended by this, is they're running their pharmacy to loss, okay, they're intentionally saying, we're gonna hit, take a cut on these prescriptions, so that you'll come in and you'll buy towels, or chairs, or whatever else, they make their money out there the front part of their store, not in their pharmacy. They make a little bit of money off of people's insurances, whoever does use insurance, but those $4 plans, they're taking a cut, they're taking that hit for you. So you might as well take advantage of that. My only problem with that is if you're somebody with a lot of medications, you do not want to be going to Walmart and then CVS and then Walgreens and then Publix or whoever to get like a free something or other because you can have an issue of a drug interaction. Sometimes your insurance can pick this up. So if, for instance, you had gone uh, to Walgreens and gotten something on your insurance and then went to CVS and got something on your insurance, your insurance can say, uh-oh, uh-oh, there's a problem, look into this. Even though CVS has no idea that what that drug is over there at Walgreens, right? Um, however, if you're filling off of your insurance on one of these $4 plans, there's nothing, you know, uh, Walgreens can't look into Walmart's system. Walmart can't look into CVS's system. So, maybe if you're going to do that, take a list of all your meds, and before you pick up a medication somewhere, say, these are the meds that I get at another location. Can you make sure that these don't interact? So those are, those are my options for saving money and discount cards. Um, my, another thing with, it's a little disclaimer, okay, is, if you're going to use one of these discount cards, don't wait until the technician or whoever's ringing you up to get all the way through the transaction and say, okay, this is $50, to then go, oh, BT Dubs, I have a card. 
Also, be polite and take it into the pharmacy. This is like billing insurance. These cards have all the information that an insurance card has. This is not something like a coupon. You can't just scan it and boom, you have like $100 off. That's not going to happen. Bring it in. It's just like insurance, okay? Number two, pay attention to that sticker and activate it. There's so many people, it says activate right on the thing. And they're like, I have a card. And I go, did you activate it? And they go, no. And so, again, disclaimer about these cards. Do the legwork. Activate the card. Don't wait till the end of the transaction to go, oh, can you try these cards? Another thing is, if you're going to get one of these cards, use the GoodRx app and find the price of it so that I'm not billing, like, 15 different discount cards to try and get you, like, a dollar off. That's how I feel about that. So, I hope this was helpful to people. Maybe the next time you have, like, a really expensive drug, you can go online and find, like I said, the manufacturer cards. These are brand name stuff, so do not go searching for generics because all you're going to get are these good RX things, okay? But brand name stuff that does not have a generic. Once it goes generic, there's usually maybe a little wiggle room where they still have those cards. I think Crestor, oh god, I was using those cards god, forever, and you just get as many as you wanted. But not all are like that. Like the second it goes generic, a lot of places are like, mm, nope, you have an alternative, sorry these out. So, again, brand name drugs, manufacturer cards. Generic drugs, GoodRx or whatever other, Weldine, I think every state has one. There's like South Carolina, um, I have seen, I've seen all sorts of drug cards. There's drug cards everywhere. They'll send them to you in the mail. Yeah, if you have insurance and you use those in the mail, just, just throw that away. All right. You have a great day. Email me at katythedruglady at yahoo.com, and I'll see you later.